ridiculous. I it's like I woke up this morning and I put on my jacket it's like thirty nine out and I'm sitting here with a blanket on and long sleeves and oh my god. Grateful I don't deal with what you guys do with I mean so many of you guys. Andy, where are you located? Where are you at? Uh, Western Mass. <laughs> it's uh this we this is the most amount of snow we've had in the last two months for the last five years. Is it? That's crazy. Yeah, we got like three feet of snow on in the ground right now. <laughs> Total. Yeah. Just... Okay. I, my snowblower is broke. Of course it is. <laughs> of, course it is. <laughs> of course it's broken. I've been Don't shoveling all my life, though, so I'm used to it. Isn't... I grew up in the mountains out west, you know, so it's not like I've never shoveled snow. But, yeah. um, yeah, no, man, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I moved to Florida for a reason. We, um, it's been a few years, but I went to a, a mastermind up in um, in Utah. We went to the Sundance Resort up there, in, um, Robert Redford's place, right? Beautiful resort, absolutely fantastic. Middle of the mountains, it was gorgeous. It was September, middle of September that we went, my fiance and I. And, you know, I'm, I'm in the mastermind. She's off the hiking and going up the lift and doing all this stuff. And she's, you know, in the morning you wake up and it's nice and cool out. It's like 50 something degrees and just beautiful weather. She's like, this is amazing. We should look at getting a place up here. This is fantastic. I love it. And she's like, it's just a little chilly in the morning. And I'm like, it's September. I'm like, do you, like in two and a half weeks, it's going to be snowing here. You realize that, right? Like this is, and then it's going to be snowing until May. <laughs> this is not, no, 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 no. That, yeah, that but it was not. beautiful in September. <laughs> oh, it was, it was amazing. Absolutely. We've talked about going back and I'm like, we're not doing snow season now. We're not doing ski season. That's, that's not, uh, that's not in the plans. So. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, appreciate all of you guys being here, being on time. Uh, fantastic to see all your smiling or grouchy faces, whatever you're in the mood with today. Uh, appreciate you guys being on. How many of you guys, uh, so I added the recording and I added the slides to um, the Google Doc, so you guys should have that available. Some of that training from kind of last week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, yesterday. How many of you guys, enjoyed it got something out of it learned something made you think enjoyed. a little bit a little bit of benefit from it yes good yes Roger? Definitely. Okay. awesome fantastic um good where do we get, get the google doc um we can i'll post the link in here in a minute or you can get it from your accountability representative if you don't have it the high performance calls are on there i i just got done hiring a new team of vas yesterday to help me with stuff for the YouTube channel and, and getting things edited. So that'll be happening soon. But I will, even with that, I'll keep updating the, the Google Doc guys if you don't want to be on the YouTube channel. Uh, with that said, yes, you can watch these um, recorded, but I feel like there's some benefit to being here live, having the opportunity to ask some questions and kind of just stay with the flow a little bit better. Um, so if possible, yeah, come, come to the live calls. On that note, all right. Now, uh, if you guys are coming on for the first time or maybe Thursday, Friday, and, and yesterday were your first calls, I, I'm i not always sitting down and going through, you know, here's this and here's social media and here's how you build up an audience. We do that occasionally. Um, I will have coming up, we're going to do some on LinkedIn, um, may do a little bit on Instagram as well. This works on any platform, guys, but depending on your niche, your audience, some platforms will work better than others, right? That's pretty straightforward, I hope, that understanding. You know, some of you guys have a niche like fitness, for example. If I'm going after personal trainers, odds are that trainer is going to be more active on something like Instagram than they would be on LinkedIn, right? Just kind of makes sense. So understanding your target audience is a big part of that. Um, and so, great. Now, we also occasionally, YouTube would be awesome. Um, yeah, I'll get them set up, Deb. Um, what we're going over today, 
we want to get into uh, part of what I do as well is help you guys understand kind of this journey of becoming an entrepreneur and, and developing yourselves and and different places that you can focus on. It's not always, um, you know, rah rah and affirmations and and sis boom bah and cheerleaders and everything else. I, I try and give it to you as real as possible. You know, not just the the uh, ups but the downs. The you know the difficulties, the obstacles that you'll face, but also the possibilities and what's really there and what all of you guys are capable of. I've worked with some amazing people. I've had a couple of mentors that, you know, I've paid to mentor me that were 20 years younger than me, you know, early twenties that were just crushing and Hey, as long as they can teach me, then great. So hopefully we are able to bring some value to you guys here now participate as much as you participate. I promise you'll get more out of it. All right. Now uh, I'm going to step off my soapbox. Let's go ahead and kick off. So I want to talk to you guys a little bit about how would you define an expert? Okay. A lot of you guys are here now. You're becoming digital entrepreneurs. One of the things you want to eventually become is an expert in your field, right? It's the guy from out of town. town. I'm good at what we do. Andy, go ahead. Guy from out of town. The expert is a guy from out of town. <laughs> so some, someone that's not uh, close by. Although a lot of your friends may think that they're experts in everything and they will definitely share their opinion as if they're experts. And um, especially the ones that have never done anything. Okay, who's talking? Who wanted to talk? Uh, it's Evie. Yeah, Evie, yes, Abby. go ahead. So does this have to do with our conversation from last week where you and I were discussing the expert? Who's the expert? I don't know. I don't remember exactly. Okay. Um, maybe, maybe. Um, so here we're looking at, because part of what you guys are doing, you're going to eventually build up your own credibility, right? But how would you guys define an expert? If you're looking, I just define it for yourselves. Who's an expert? Someone, someone an expert would be, sorry. Okay. So Randy and then Gabriel. Randy, go ahead. Uh, someone who spent about a thousand hours on a given task or um, I guess a, a a job or what have you would be considered okay. an expert definition wise. Okay. Gabriel, what about yourself? Uh, consider somebody an expert who has a vast amount of knowledge in a specific, in a specific field. Uh, somebody who knows a lot about one thing, not about a lot of things. They're an expert yeah. in that particular thing. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, not the jack of all trades, expert of none, right? We're looking for someone that's kind of learned to be an, an expert in, in that particular thing. So Jess is saying the 10,000 hours, according to Gladwell. Have we heard that? 10,000 hours, according to Gladwell? No? That's huge. Jess, yeah. It is. It is. That's okay. That's so Jess right is jumping ahead. I'm going to, I'm going to touch a little bit on that. So let's kind of look at this. I want you guys to go ahead and just write that out on your paper. You know, what is an expert? Think a little bit about it. So Here's the definition, a couple of things. So it's a person who has a comprehensive and authoritative knowledge of or skill in a particular area. So along the lines of what Gabriel was saying, right? Having or involving authoritative knowledge. So you've got it or, or you're using it, right? Now, here's something. So there's research that shows that there's no direct correlation between IQ and expert performance. So it doesn't necessarily mean that the person that has a higher level IQ just means that they're good at a particular field, chess, music, sports, medicine, et cetera, right? Now, before we get in a little bit to some of the next part, I want you to think, what is an expert marketer or a digital entrepreneur, right? We're all becoming digital entrepreneurs. So how would, what are some skills that you need to get good at to become a digital entrepreneur, like a, at an expert level? Now, you don't necessarily have to be an expert, best of the best of the best to do well online. But I, I want to bring home a point. I want you guys to understand this. We're going to come at it from a different, a couple of different perspectives. So stay with me through the whole thing because some of you guys may hear like that 10,000 hours or here you need to be an expert and you get intimidated. Don't please pay attention to the whole training. But what, what do you guys think? What are some skills as a digital entrepreneur, as a marketer that will help you become more successful in this line of work and what we're doing? What are some skills? I think setting up your page to cater to your market. Okay. So that so setting up the page is one thing, catering to the market is another, right? Those are knowing two different stuff that actually, Knowing well, stuff that actually works. 
Uh, so it's not like a, because everybody can read a few articles, but knowing stuff that actually works and the expert is somebody who never stops learning uh, to be okay. ahead of the game. And so another okay, element. So we had the tech side of building out a funnel, right? Is what the first thing that he said. Then we have understand your market, knowing what works. So part of that just comes from practice, right? So what skill, right? Are we, what's the definitive skill that we're talking about? Because knowing what works is kind of all encompassing every single thing that you're doing, right? I mean, so I, I What think... do you need to get good at? So the messaging, so Simon, I, I'm assuming you're talking about the marketing copy that I'm, like how I, pre, you know, present my message, right? The messaging that I'm presenting, right? Not necessarily direct messaging. Yes? Okay, good. So that uh, would be copywriting, okay? Understanding why people buy. So that's the psychology or the human behavior, right? <laughs> Understanding the, why they buy. That's huge. Now that changes from audience to audience, right? So hold up real quick. Let me come back. Yeah, Posting in content general that encourages engagement. So that's headlines and engaging copy. So that goes with copy, but there's another little aspect of it, right? So headlines are part of copy. Engagement. So we talked about engagement a little bit over the last little bit. Hold on, Maria. I know you're you're there, but I got someone here. Um, okay, being successful at lead gen. So lead generation is one. I would say yes. Uh, expert duplicate their success model. Uh, yeah, okay. Maria, what were you gonna say? No, uh, I was going to talk about the psychology aspect of it, but at the end of the day, like there are tech, psychology, uh, like everything, but um, at the end of the day, you can be um, a master, like, like uh, I don't know the word in English, I forgot. Um, What's it in Spanish? Uh, tercerizar, <laughs> like, uh, like, never mind, I forgot. I just continue. Find, find, find the word and, and then provide it. So here's the thing, guys. So yeah, you, you know, knowing these things, but also, right, as we look at scaling, so Denise is talking about some of this, right? Depending on where you want to get your business, parts of it will be time management. Time management is important. Your ability to focus. Self-awareness, because self-awareness will help me learn, right? Knowing how I learn is important. Maybe people management, because if I don't want to learn all these damn skills because there's too much for it and it can become overwhelming and oh my gosh, there's so much here. I don't, I'm going to outsource it. There you and go. There okay you go. Too. That was the outsourcing <laughs> management. Yeah, there you right? go. That, that was you guys, you don't have to learn. You don't have to be an expert at every single one of these skills. Hi, right? so no, I hear I'm sorry. Somebody was just talking. Yes. No. Okay. So do, do you guys understand what I'm saying? So yeah, all of these elements. Great. But if I can build out some of them and then I can find somebody else to do the rest, that's okay too. Right. The general contractor, if he's building a house, I mean, do we have any contractors on here in one way or another home improvement, do something like that? Or has anybody done I, I am. Okay. Do you have engineering? To be Okay, so there you go, an engineer. We I know we have some architects, some other things. Do I have to be a, a plumber, a master plumber, a master welder? Do I have to be a framer? Do I have to be a roofer, an electrician? No. All the other you experts. Be, you find other people to do that stuff, right? That's how that works. You don't have to do every single element. And you can run this business the same way, guys. Now, we dive into what was mentioned up here, Jess talked about. Um, full understanding of the process. You need to understand enough. You don't need to understand necessarily every single step-by-step -step process involved in, in building out the funnel. You don't. So I'm I'll tell you right now, you don't, Philip. I don't need to understand every single thing that's going on. I need to understand enough and I have to be able to manage it. I, if I'm going to do it all, yes, I need to understand every single thing. If I'm going to outsource some of it, I've got to understand enough of it, right? Yeah, having a wedding planner. I don't need to know every single spice that the cook is putting into the food that I'm going to be eating. 
I just need, want to know, understand the overall taste, right? So someone running a restaurant doesn't have to know every single way to cut a vegetable and do this and do that, right? Like they've got to understand how to manage the flow, right? There's a difference in, in each of these elements. Now, I want to um, kind of dive into something that was brought up so we can understand this because there's this book, Outliers, Okay, so Jess was ahead of it. This is this book, Outliers, by Malcolm Gladwell. And Gladwell, I, I absolutely love a lot of his stuff. But he takes research and he kind of explains it and all these different phenomena that are going on. So he talks about this 10,000-hour rule. He calls it a rule to become successful. Okay, so he talks about the Beatles. They became world-famous musicians. A lot of people don't understand from 1960 to 1964, while they lived in Germany, they performed over 1,200 times, right? They started performing in strip clubs, and then they started going more and more and more, right? But for four years, they were playing like almost every single day, multiple times a day, hours and hours and hours, plus the practice they were putting in. When you look at a medical residency, if you look at typically a five-year residency, the time that they put in on site, plus the time that they're studying, it works out to 48 hour, you know, 48 weeks a year, sometimes more. They accumulate between 10 and 17,000 hours worth of experience, right? Research done by a gentleman named Erickson, and this is where a lot of the book was founded, focused on violin students at an academy in Berlin, found that most of them had become, you know, when you looked at the ones that were exceptional, by the time they turned 20, they had put in 10,000 hours. Now, you can be good and do less, right? But that's kind of what he kept kind of coming back to was a general rule of this 10,000 hours. Bill Gates, 10,000 hours of programming work before founding Microsoft. He started in high school. There's this amazing story about what Gates did. His high school kind of got access to computers. They learned how to program. He was breaking, like getting into, <coughs> excuse me, the local college and programming there. They were doing just all sorts of amazing stuff. But before he founded Microsoft, he had put in all this work. Right now, here's the reality though. They talk about all, all this time practicing. All practice is not equal. Okay. Well, would it be the same thing experiment on your own for three hours versus having an expert work with you? No, it's not the same guys. It's going to be different. How much different? I don't know. Anywhere between 18 to hundred percent different. If you got someone looking over your shoulder. But if I can speed things up by 30, 40, 50% because I've got someone else working with me, then that's worth it for me, right? Now, here's something else, a key element of what they talk about. There is a difference between practice, practice with an expert and deliberate practice. Typically deliberate practice is guided by an expert so I pulled this from a, a definition, someone that's, you know, a skilled coach, a mentor, someone with the expert eye. Okay. Typically they offer feedback. Okay. They'll offer feedback that matters. So it's not just the hours. Okay. Now deliberate practice. Because I can sit here. So this is one of the things I talked about earlier, right? With focus. This is why I can sit here and I can spend the time doing it. Or I can be focused and strategic and know what I'm doing and what I'm going after and, and have a plan and go through that plan. And then if I'm getting that help and that feedback from a mentor, absolutely. And then if I'm implementing that, right? There is a difference in practice and study. And we can all agree. We've all had times when we've studied and we've been on point. And then we've all had times where we study and you get done and you go, what the hell did I just do? I don't remember anything, right? Like that was a waste of time. We've all had those moments, right? There's a difference in one or the other. And you got to be able to look at it. Now, here's the reality, guys. You know, because you can go you can go on in line and you can look up. Outliers is a great book, but you got to take into consideration certain things. I'm going to go over certain elements that he talks about really play into it. It's not just... The hours it isn't it could be 700 hours it could be 16,000 hours everything's gonna be different yeah talent code I'll, I'll get to at some point for sure it's a good book I'm gonna end up talking about it at some point Jess um, 
tipping point is another one. I mean, there's others. So, for example, guys, and this is where we've got to look at it. Sports, marketing changes things. But, like, I can go practice for 10,000 hours a sport right now. Right? Like, let's talk about basketball. Basketball is kind of a funny example that I use. We've got the Super Bowl coming up. NBA season just kicked off. Okay. Let's say I go start practicing 10,000 hours. Let's say I start practicing eight hours a day. I'm 41 years old. I'm six foot one. You can see my genetics. You think I'm ever going to play in the NBA? No. What, am I ever going to play college ball? Because I've still got <laughs> eligibility, guys. I've got the eligibility. Right? No. I'm not. Now I'll get better. And I might be better than a lot of the guys that play pickup ball at the, you know, the RDV sportsplex down the road from me. And I'll get in shape and I'll be able to enjoy life. And there's all these other benefits, but I'm never getting to that level. Right? So here on the call, when we're looking at becoming a digital marketer, we say you put in a 10,000 hours, you know, being a digital entrepreneur, forget about just marketer, right? Are we going to be Bill Gates? Are we going to be Jeff Bezos? Probably not, but that's okay. You can I, still. I, like, I disagree. Okay? I disagree. Like about becoming you, Bill you Gates. You can be. You can be. Depends on how hard you work and what niche you pick right. and what you do. But exactly. there's ele but there's elements to Bezos and Gates and some other things, right? So timing is part of it. You know, and and. Can you improve vastly, greatly upon your current situation? Absolutely. But I, I pulled those two simply because Gates you know, got into it at a time. So here's part of the, the uh, yeah, right, right place, right time, right connections. So part of it is timing, guys. Timing, upbringing, cultural legacy, opportunities, and, and the practice. Okay? And I bring that up because this, when we look at, you know, Bill Gates, he got into coding and computers at a time in the late 70s and early 80s when that was coming into the market in a way that had never been introduced. Amazon and Bezos stepped into it and fulfilled something within the market that had never really been done. Now, can you do that? Yes, absolutely, guys, because at, at the heart of the definition of being an entrepreneur is solving a problem for consumers. If you learn how to solve a problem, that problem is big enough and you can impact a large enough portion of the market, then yes, you can do that, okay? So is it possible for some of you guys, for some of us to be able to do that? Yes. As long as you find that product and you become that individual with the understanding, look, it took Bezos 20 plus years to do what he's done and thousands and thousands of hours and then finding the team. He doesn't do everything that is necessary to do what he does, right? He's expanded. Gates is the same way. He's not relying simply upon his work. He is leveraging others. He's leveraging technology and everything else. With that said, setting those guys aside, can I take where I'm at right now and 10x my results? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. Can I go from 100,000 to a million a year? Yes. Absolutely. 100%. Is it going to be because of 10,000 hours worth of practice? Look, based on the numbers and how many we have on this call right now, we have over 50 people on the call. Some of you would get there within you know, hundreds of hours, some may take thousands, everybody's going to be a little bit different because we're all different. Because we're we're different, you know, ages and everything else, right? Age, abilities, all of the, there are differences in who we are. It doesn't mean we can't get there. It doesn't mean we can't improve our lives. What it means is we've got to be cognizant of where we are, who we are, and what needs to happen in order to change. There's nobody on here that is incapable of that change. Time and knowledge element. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. But I defy anybody on here that says I can't do it. Every single person can. It's just identifying what you need to work on. Is that cool? Is it, you know, it, so it's be aware of where the limits are with the understanding that most of those limits aren't necessarily limits. They're simply obstacles to that next step, right? And I'm sure you'd probably agree with with what with that statement. Uh, that also, 
also mindset will play a big role as well. Right. So here's here's where we want, here's the next step. And I want everybody to kind of, we're going to do some of these together. And then some of you guys are going to do this on your own. You're going to come up with some of your own, right? So what are the elements that are going to make a difference for you to become the expert or to become the best version of yourself? So let's pull that 10,000 hours equation out of it. There's a lot of great things inside that book. It's a good one to read with the understanding that even Gladwell sell, says, look, that's a, that's a great idea, and there, but there's so many more elements on what's going to help you become an expert or become the best version of you. So, ladies and gentlemen, what elements, what factors will help you become an expert, best version of you, you know, Paul or Maria 2.0, 3.0, all of those things. Philip, it depends. I did a training on niche, right? Um, December 10th on the recordings, you can go back and watch the training on niche and, and target audience. But ultimately it depends on you. So, <coughs> um, let's see. Yeah, Chris Gardner's the, the movie from uh, The Pursuit of Happiness, absolutely great thing. You know, he was older, Colonel Sanders was in his 60s before he got himself started after being bankrupt a couple of times. So age, but age does take a role in it. Why? Because age is going to determine where I came from and, you know, where I'm starting from. And it'll help me understand kind of where, not necessarily my limits, but what I need to be, uh, you know, understanding of. Okay, so age is one thing. What are some other factors, ladies and gentlemen? Help Knowledge, me. study, um, action, okay. and consistency. So knowledge, study. Now the study is also going to be right. The directed study, we'll call it that just like the directed practice, directed study so that it's, um, so consistency. Um, one very important resilience risk. I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah. Resiliency. Perseverance. Commitment. I'm, I understand I'm spelling some of these wrong guys. I'm sorry. I would say remove limiting beliefs. So personal beliefs. commitment. Being your own biggest support. Commitment. Um, imagination. What were you saying? I, outside I, of I, the box. Uh, being your own biggest support. Activity so, and personal, attitude. Personal belief. So there's mm -hmm. beliefs, plural, like what you believe. So this would also be like our values, right? And then personal belief, you know, belief in yourself. Attitude and activity as but well. But I would also yeah. add beliefs to how you perceive yourself in being successful. Yeah, so that, yeah. So I would put that there, personal belief. Um, your Skill attitude set, humility. Um, oh, I put attitude right there, humility. And uh, what about Andrew, Andrew, a guy want to see failure as a catalyst to go forward, not as a as a okay. setback. So how you, yeah, how you approach success or failure, right? So yes. your your let's call it your paradigm. Yeah, that's kind yeah, of, I like that. I like um, that. Yes, that kind of encompasses a number of things. How about mm -hmm. self motivation? Hold on, let me. I gotta. What your motivation is? Self motivation, you need that in this business yeah, for sure. And also, oh, if, yes. some, if something goes wrong, like don't be too harsh on yourself, like, like continue working, but you know, like, I don't know what's the word for that. Never give up on yourself. <laughs> self talk, I think that's what you're self, self talk, self talk, self belief, um, motivation. So one thing I'm going to put out is clarity. Knowing what Developing exactly you're going your after, skill set. Right? being focused. Yeah. So you need to know exactly what it is, what you're going after. So I can understand what I need to do on a daily basis. So I'm clear on those things. Right. Um, here's one thing. So when we talk about, I, and I go over this all over all the time, right? Self-awareness. Part of that is how I learn, right? We talked about study and diligence and all this. You've got to know how you learn. Each of you learn differently, right? Do so that. I do these do and we do videos and you can listen to an audio and you can look at the slides and there's, 
you know, maybe follow up, but you've got to understand how you learn. If you don't figure that out, you're going to struggle in general, guys. A lot of times people are like, well, this program didn't work for me. This program didn't work. You haven't figured out how you're going to learn the best and how to apply that. Everybody should be taking this and turning around and doing some homework on it. You, this list of what, you know, what elements are going to make the difference for you. You guys should create your own list here. You know, I'm writing this stuff down, but you should figure out your own. And then if possible, you should find somebody, a significant other, anybody else and say, hey, we talked about this, this topic today about becoming an expert. And there's this guy that says you need 10,000 hours and some people don't believe it, but I think that there's some things that we can do, I can do to better myself. Here's some things that I thought about. Find somebody that you can teach this to, right? Yes, yes. You don't have to be an Learn expert. Twice. If you ever wanna become, if you want to accelerate your learning, guys, then pick a topic like this. Each. Yeah, stories absolutely helps. I mean, there's there's a reason that I, you know, religion so, so often is taught through parables. Every single mm -hmm. religion out there, right? Mm -hmm. Every religion on this planet is taught through parables because stories help you identify with it. There's a reason that marketing, when telling a story, works so well. So Omni will uh, also help you. You gotta hang around with like-minded people. Yeah. Or people who don't even fully get you, but uh, they support you even if uh, they're like, I don't fully agree, but I believe in you. The network that you've got around you, we've talked a lot about that recently. Meditation, okay. Andrew. What's that? Meditation. You need to meditate, you know, free yourselves. Yeah. Yeah. So part of that positive is, you know, peer personal. groups. Some important to say again. Positive peer groups. Yeah, peer groups. So that goes with your network. Yeah. Right. Right. The point I'm making here, guys. You know the. Nobody the uh, uh, mentioned rest. Nobody mentioned rest. <laughs> rest. Well, like, meditation. Hey, Health, yeah, physical health. Meditation doesn't make me rest personally. Like, like so, rest in just like, you sleep. know, I think too much during meditation. But yeah, like rest. So here's I the thing, guys. A lot no. of us struggle with that. You, learning how I learn allows me to focus on certain skills, right? What skills do I need? Yes, you need to learn how to market. You need to learn how to write good copy. Tech is important. Can I outsource every single one of these? Absolutely. So if I'm going to outsource, then I need to be a good manager. I need to be excellent at time management. I need to, you know, look at, at different elements of how to run the business. I need to be able to look at big picture, look at the macro versus the micro, right? I, I need to be able mm -hmm. to identify finances because now I got to pay closer attention to my costs than if I'm trying to do it all on my own. But part of that too, if I'm doing it all on my own, then I need to figure out some self-worth and figure out what my time is worth, right? A lot of you guys think that you're doing it on your own, you go, well, it's free if I do it on my own. If you are always working for free and if you think your time isn't worth anything, then you need to do a little self-adjustment, ladies and gentlemen, right? Because damn it, your, your time is worth money. With that said, becoming successful as a digital entrepreneur involves more than just writing good copy, running a good ad but you don't have to put in 10,000 hours to learn these skills. There are things that you can do that will accelerate your growth. There are things that you can do that will help you become the best version of you possible. Don't be intimidated and think, well, I'm this old already. I don't have time for 10,000 hours. Okay. Then find other ways to leverage or get there because you're capable for of the doing mentor. It. You have to work Mentors, for the mentor. Part, yeah. Part of it's that part of it's the mentorship. Part of it's having the right system. Part of it's understanding you don't have to start from scratch. All of you with the funnel, you're already starting a few steps down the road. You're already sitting inside a vehicle that works. How do I drive at the best of my ability, right, guys? My point with all of this is you're capable of learning anything you need to. You've got help if you're willing to look for it. And you're all, you know, life is going to keep coming. Those fires are going to keep blazing but you're all capable of always finding a way to rise up from the ashes and flying like the phoenixes that you are.
So on that note, guys, go out, study a little bit. Outliers uh, by Malcolm Gladwell. It's a great thing. Take everything into it, but look at the overall picture and look at some of those circumstances that will make a difference for you. Create a list of what elements are important for your overall growth as an entrepreneur. Do you guys recognize that last list? We weren't writing just, you know, time spent marketing, time spent studying. There's all these other elements to what it's going to take to get you to that next level, right? Okay. So on, on that note, I'm going to wrap up today. We'll be back tomorrow. Uh, recordings are available. Get with your accountability rep if you need it. You guys, have an amazing day. Keep developing yourselves. Appreciate you being here. Have a good one, guys. We'll talk Thanks to you Andrew. soon. Bye. Thanks, Thanks, everybody. Have a great Thanks, day, Andrew. everybody. Bye. -bye. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye.